section 123 of our beloved constitution, the Parliament of the Commonwealth may, and only the Parliament of the Commonwealth may, with the consent of the Parliament of the State and approval of the majority of electors of that state, not implied consent, voting upon the question, can increase, diminish, or otherwise alter the limits of the state or change the borders. Here's an ABC article, very interesting, last month. New South Wales ACT border to change to place gin and dairy development in the Australian Capital Territory. Well, they've cut a few corners to get there. Right at the bottom, apparently, Premier Perrottet has personally contacted the ACT Chief Minister to give it the green light. Well, there's no law, regulation, or instrument that gives New South Wales Premier the authority to change the border. The key points, the ACT wants to expand to encompass a housing development that crosses this door. Well, there's plenty of suburbia across the borders. You've got Albury with Donga, you've got Gold Coast Tweed. You, you don't need to, to give away your land. Now, it's not a small plot. It's 330 hectares of farmland called Parkwood. Oh, surrounded by waterways, the only way it can be accessed to the territory site. Well, that doesn't matter. People cross borders all the time. There's going to be tens of thousands of people in this estate, and a lot of them in New South Wales. Well, that's a lot of stamp duty we're going to miss out on if it doesn't stay in New South Wales. And all the GDP of having all those people part of New South Wales, we're, we're going to lose all that, are we? And has anyone checked the land? There's no coal, gas or gold or something other there, is there? Oh, they check that, surely. That's the first change in 100 years. That's not something you do just, ah, oh, just give the green light. Yeah, not a problem. Now, this development's been in the works since 2017. Now, they don't talk about ch changing the border there. They go, New South Wales subject to rezoning, so it's going to be part of New South Wales back back at this stage. So what's what's happened in between? This is a sitting of the ACT government. This is in 12th of November 2021. Government land purchase. And Mrs Kicker asked the Minister for Housing and Suburban Development some questions. Look, <laughs> got quite a few questions right now. Well, we've got questions one, two, and three. What steps either formal or informal have been taken so far in investigating the possibility of purchasing land from New South Wales? Okay, well, they haven't got it yet. And Corkill Brothers have been approached. We'll get to that a bit later on. That's very important. Have there been any discussions within the ACT government about getting the land and subsequently annexing the land? I'm not sure that's how it works. I mean, normally annexing of land by one state over another, either nations, is, it's normally a war. <laughs> they're gonna, gonna invade New South Wales. Well, they're not long answers. The first of the first one is anyone you know thought about the possibility of buying it? Oh, we've purchased it. Question number three. Oh, was there any discussion within the government about purchasing it? See response to question one. No. Well, this is looking pretty dodgy to me. <laughs> Where do you see question two? Because they haven't actually purchased the land. Because they can't. Uh, New South Wales as the government can't purchase, all their land that they own is public land, so they can't purchase land in Victoria because, well, it's no longer Victorian land, it's New South Wales public land. It just can't happen, but they've got a way around it. Oh, the tangle webs they weave. All right, the gin and dairy development is a joint venture between the territory and Riverview Developments, a subsidiary of Corkill, so we've got that. Right, the New South Wales land adjacent to gin and dairy is owned by another subsidiary of Corkill, but not Riverview Developments. Do they mention who owns it? Well, no. And by agreement, committed to the gin dairy development. So that purchase of the land is through an agreement with a company, with a, with a subsidiary they don't mention. Well, how do they get around the pesky constitution? Well, annexing, oh, some company we're not going to mention owns land. And it's all a bit complicated. It still doesn't get away from the fact that you've got to have a vote by the people of New South Wales. Well, I think the time period that it occurred is probably a clue, 2021, right in the middle of, a, I think there was an emergency of some description. Ah, oh, that's right, 8th of March, 2020 was the start of a very long emergency. Now, according to this legal research paper by, published by the Library of Victorian Government, emergency law suspends aspects of the normal distribution of constitutional power, and it it's talking about the constitutional norms that ground the very legitimacy of the state. Hang on a minute. Sound like other emergencies like bushfires where the Attorney General gets his pen out. This was done by the Governor General, who has executive powers of, and the maintenance of the Constitution. But down the bottom, he also holds and possibly exercises reserve powers. What are these reserve powers? See, these Governor General reserve powers are not included in the Constitution. And the exact nature and scope of these powers is arguable. See, that's what you want, isn't it? <laughs> when you're right at the, the top of the nation, you want one person who 
Uh, we don't really know what they're capable of, but they can shut down the whole fucking country. To me, it looks like the Constitution wasn't just partially suspended through severability clauses. I think the whole thing was shut down. And this is, this is the clue. The timing for the 2022 federal election. Now, the very last day it could be held was the 21st of May, which that was the date of the election. And the Act requires exactly the minimum 33 days between the issue of the writs and election day. And 33 days prior to the 21st is the 17th of April, which happens to be the last day, not just the last day, the last minute, 2359. They dragged it out as long as they could, exactly 33 days. So it, it would appear that the Constitution was suspended and needed to be brought back in order for the election to be held. I can't think of it. I mean, this was when COVID cases were just rising and it was announced on the 25th of March by by Han. I'm not going to show that because if I start to show that sort of stuff, it all gets a bit, you know, strikes and all that sort of thing start to start to occur. Because a lot of unconstitutional things happened during that period. We all remember just closing the borders is unconstitutional, actually. We're open about that and even had some discussion. Alexander Downer said, you can't under Section 117, the Constitution and a few other things. But the biggest thing which I'm going to cover in another video was the $400 billion without appropriation, which is what you need under the Constitution, that the RBA typed into the accounts of all the banks. They stole $400 billion under two under the QE and the TFF, the funding facility. But this one, I think this one's opportunistic, but I don't, I don't underestimate the significance that if, if they get away with this, because I think their legal standpoint is that the Commonwealth of Australia was suspended and not in existence and on the seven and we reverted back to being individual states which is really how all of those powers were exercised the states were just doing what they wanted they got rid of coag which which is an indication that we all just went back to just being states and then when the when it gets lifted all of the built-up legislation and anything that they passed or any activity comes into effect back on the 17th of april so they've changed the borders and then when it comes back into effect, it's like the constitution started again and that's where the border always was, if that makes any sense to anyone. So what were some of the advantages? Well, one of them is, is if you've got corruption in one government that this one particular development, unlike all others, and it's massive, for some reason got exempted by Minister Mick Gentleman from having an environmental impact statement. Well, that's going to cut some costs, isn't it? And then you don't have to have the corruption in New South Wales to the same degree. Well, if that land just becomes part of the ACT, you don't have to do any environmental impact studies. And probably the still greatest increase in land value occurs when it goes from rural to residential. So remember, this was farmland. So we still don't know who the other subsidiary that actually owns the land is or more importantly who's behind it because they're going to make a lot of money as well i mean 330 hectares that's got to be in the tens of millions of dollars i think that might be behind it as well it's not in the jurisdiction of, of new south wales icac dominic paradise got a nothing to do with me that's all that's all act land and i also think from the act's point of view like I mentioned before, you've got tens of thousands of residents adding to the GDP of New South Wales. Well, that's just not going to happen. They're going to get that. So there's quite a few boxes they can tick as to why they went and did this opportunistic. Because I don't think it was like plan like the, the banker one. This was just, hey, I think so someone cobbled together a plan. They probably thought the Constitution's down. What can we get away with? And this was one of them. Some people might know, some people might not, but I'm actually running a project where I chase up this sort of thing. So I'm going to run an inquiry. I'll put links to the social media. It's separate from this channel. Uh, and I'm going to ask the parliamentarian, uh, listen, are you guys aware that the, uh, one of your responsibilities has been taken over by, by this doofus? And uh, to Dominic Perito, yeah, Dominic, just, just a quick one. Where do you get the authority to give away 300 permanently 330 hectares of New South Wales wealth for no benefit. <laughs> well, he doesn't. I've got to challenge him on it. 
It may come down to, I don't know how they're going to respond if they have done it while the constitution's suspended. But that's another thing I want to prove as well as a bigger part of the project. I've got so many inquiries going. This is just one of them. So, all right. Um, so head on over if you're interested in following up. Otherwise, there's some information you can share. Share this around. Let people know what's going on. All right. That's it for this one.